Good morning. Hello again. And we got Pastor Ian Shelton with us again. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, thank you for being available a second time. Um, Fine. Yeah, 47 years of ministry in Toowoomba. So, you know, after you know years of experience, and I know you've traveled the world, so there are lots of things on your heart. So two morning chats hardly scratch the surface, I reckon. So maybe just share a little bit, you know, some of the passions you have, what yeah. you're on about. Well, my passions, uh, have, all that time, ministry time, has been for the unity of the church in, in its respective towns and cities, yes. and for that church to be effective to see transformation in the city. Our cities yes. don't belong to Satan, they belong to Jesus. Yes. And um, it, it shouldn't be covered with darkness and oppression and violence and all the social ills we have and injustices. It should be filled with the shalom and beauty and justice and joy of Jesus. Yes, yes. But that hasn't happened. But the, uh, the joy to me, especially in the last few years, is to realize God's doing something afresh around the world. And particularly in, in this area of cities, which I've always yeah. dreamt about, but we've only touched in a very small way here in Toowoomba. Yes. And uh, I think oh, it's like, you know, yeah. we had highlights in Toowoomba. You we know, had wonderful e highlights. Easter Fest like, yes. made a big mark. Wonderful. And and we had vibrant churches yeah. and a lot of joy. So a lot like, of joy. I, I really celebrate what God did do in our Absolutely. city. Absolutely. Me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Like, wonderful. Uh, we had an amazing time. Yeah. But it could have gone further and it didn't go further at the moment. It's actually gone backwards. Yeah. Yeah, you would say the same. I would say the same. Yeah. And I, I've, I know when I listen to you, like, you know, reach the city and whatever, you know, and then I, I even look at our own church and like, uh, you know, where's the outreach program? Where's the feeding of the hungry and, and all of that? And, 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 you know, I'm probably, you know, forgive me for saying that, you know, you know, it's a morning chat of our own church. Like, I get maybe a weekly commitment and I probably can make a choice to either go to a Sunday service or they go to a mini branch home group. Like, but it's very hard to get a second commitment. Yeah. It's very hard to even get, you know, prayer meeting. And we know unless we pray, you know, the other things don't happen. So I hear you know, the, the passion of taking a city and Jesus talks about discipling a nation. And then I look at the church and I mean, we have a good church, like relatively speaking, but we, we don't have a church that is necessarily taking the city. No. no, so <laughs> so what have you know? Can is I there a, a word of encouragement for us? Can like, I give a little story? Uh, yeah. A friend of mine's assistant pastor of a Church of Christ at Arana Hills in Brisbane, so yes. very close to yeah. us. Yeah. And during lockdown, he got a little frustrated. He's a bit of a goer, and so he started to walk up and down his street and meet people. And then he decided he found these needs and started to meet them, pray for people, yeah. uh, took, took, did a lot of practical things, and then told his church about it. And the senior pastor decided, he's an even stronger goer, young South African leader, uh, he decided that a lot of people should adopt their streets. Yeah. And so they had a little training program, help people to be chaplains in their streets. Yes. Uh, the, sh the short answer is now they have 120 streets covered with street chaplains, just congregational members who are reaching out and they put it on Facebook and now people adopting city uh, streets even in other cities and even other nations. How good but, is that? And using their training. Yeah, so yeah. there's just a little thing. That can and, and it's not even super complicated. Not at all. I mean, I, I like, no, you know, Heidi good. Baker, you know, I like her. And, you know, when you, mm. when you talk about reaching a city, uh, that to many people is, where do I start? It's, you know what what is actually needed for that but you know she she makes this big point is stop for the one yeah stop for the one in front of you so you change the city one person at a time yeah and i actually yep. you know jordan peterson you listen i know you listen to him a fair bit as well Who? jordan peterson oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. and like you know he he was a little bit uh, tempted maybe to go into politics yeah and he made a conscious decision not to do that he thought the best way of actually changing a culture is one person at a time. So he became a clinical psychologist. Yeah. And I thought, what a Christian answer, mm. in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, marvelous. Yeah, marvelous. So you, you, you change culture, one person, one family at yeah. a time. And I, I probably feel that's what we can do. Yeah. Uh, um, that's, what, that's how a whole church can become active, one person at a time. Absolutely. I, I think that's not a strange idea to us, uh, but 
it, what is difficult is how to do that. Yes. Because many of us would like to be better witnesses, but it seems a bit of a challenge. We have foot and mouth disease or something. Yes. How do you actually yes. witness and reach out? And that's why I like some of these creative ideas that helps ordinary uh, churchgoers to um, understand how we can do, be more effective yes. out into the workplace and yeah. the streets. Well, we actually got a Christian couple, you, you know them, they're from Humewich. Uh, and they are, I would say, they're the chaplains of our street. Wow. Like, they haven't got an official title, no. but once a year they invite them, everyone to their place. Yeah. You know, at the beginning of COVID-19, they went from door to door giving bickies and, you know, and when people, when people have needs, that's where they go. Uh, wonderful. So, how good is that? That's, uh, somebody once said, um, the harvest is in the pain. Yeah. And so discover some pain in your city. Yeah. Now, for instance, we've got a few people here in Toowoomba that every few weeks visit the brothel to see how the prostitutes are doing. Yeah. And now two of those ladies that are visiting in that group have started a home group for prostitutes. How good is and that? they have four to six prostitutes yeah, come yeah. To their home. I'm yes. not too sure how often it is, but every week or two. Yes. Uh, so I little mean, things can uh, be done. I, you know, where I'm looking to God for that is, He can awaken the joy of doing that. Yeah. And you know, I read the other day about Count Zinzendorf, you know, church history, and he said, Christians will not discover true joy until they start witnessing to someone else. It's very good. Like, and you are surprised by that. Oh, do I have to witness? You know, like. You know, the pastor's pressuring me, I have to do something. And, you know, that's how it comes across a bit, like, you know, don't want to... But once you start doing it, you're actually surprised. It's not labor. No. It's joy. Yeah. Because the presence and the Spirit of God is there. And it is about, you know, we have good news. Mm. And we actually have power that comes with it. Yeah. And, you know, our street, I would say, it's not even, um, you know, ministering to people in pain. It's just everyone... Because community is so rare, you know, you hardly know your neighbor and whatever. And so if you've got someone that actually makes the effort of getting to know you and your name and, you know, your children and what your needs are. And if someone has to shift, they can store their furniture in their garage for a while. And, you, you know, that's just showing love. Yeah. And everyone responds to love. Yeah. 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 It's just discovering what fits your gifting and, and dispositions and passions. Uh, not everybody can do everything, no. uh, but everybody can do something. Yes. But, uh, the body uh, means that everybody has a function, but it'll all be different. So I think the, the responsibility of the leaders of God's flock is to help equip the saints, to help them realize what gifts they've got, what passions, yeah. and even what opportunities, because yeah. a lot of people don't see opportunities easily. Yes. Uh, but that's a leader's job to help them see yeah. that and then equip them for that. Yeah. And, I mean, I like, you know, in our church, I like, like numerous people talk about their workplace as their mission place. Yeah. And it is. It is. Like, it totally is. And to yeah. be intentional about that and see the opportunity is great. But, you know, I reflect a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated with myself because I like to be a good street evangelist and all of that. I got, I got the heart for it, but not the skill. <laughs> so, Me too. Like, I'm, I'm hopeless. But I like to be there and like with uh, the couple in our street, they break the ice, mm. they, they establish a relationship and then they can introduce you yeah. and then, then I'm right, yeah. then I can be, you know, but I admire the gift of people that can just break yeah. the ice. Yeah, uh, that is a gift. And that's why uh, solo Christianity is unknown in the Bible, yes. uh, we're a body. Yes. And so therefore there'll always be somebody in every group that has particular gifts and others can follow yes. that leadership gift yes. and be empowered themselves. Yes. Uh, but so often we expect everybody to be a witness in the same way, but that's yeah. not possible. Yeah, that's not. And it's not necessary. And not necessary. And, that's and, not the body. You know, like true evangelists, it's not going to be a short of, shortage of converts. But then the converts need to be discipled. Yeah. And that's a whole different set of gifting. So you need the teachers, yeah. you, you need the mums and dads, yeah. uh, and all of that. Uh, very so, much. Yeah. Very, very much. Yeah. You know, when we talk about that, you know, you, you say the believers need one another. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably in this current season a bit of a challenge as well when we can't actually meet. Yeah. So. Uh, I think it's extra eff effort to stay connected as a functioning community. 
Yes. Uh, maybe it's time to seek out, like you have here, the Church of Christ people in your same street. Uh, maybe it's time to seek out other Christians in your area and work with them and not so, be so hemmed in simply by congregational or denominational constraints. Now, that's a bit threatening to perhaps pastors and leaders, uh, but uh, Tim Keller, they were asked him, uh, what is the future of the church? Yeah. He said, the Great Commission is that you go where the people are. COVID has meant that we're back in our suburbs and smaller uh, micro communities. Yes. That's where we should seek each other out as the church, be the church there and reach our micro community. Yes. Ah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, it is probably a little bit, um, that's the micro, mm -hmm. but you know, you know you, you're on about the unity of the church and the city, so the micro somewhere is connecting with something bigger and then something yeah. bigger. And you need that because um, God is very organized. There's structured leadership. Yeah. There's apostles and prophets. Yeah. And, and so... I sometimes feel like it's probably the Aussie uh, mentality as well. It's just we can do our own thing. Yeah. You know, we don't need anyone else. Yeah. Uh, a unity requires a lot of humility. Yeah. It means that in honor we prefer someone else yeah. above ourselves. Yeah. And that means someone else's ministry above my ministry. Yeah. Someone else's church above my yeah. church. Yeah. Um, beauty is seen in humility. Um, and uh, well, seen in unity and only humility can create it. Yes. And I think our disunity... Uh, speaks for itself, yes. a lack of humility. Yeah, and uh, I probably would say a lack of vision, because uh, you know, I, I, I think the vision cannot be to grow my church. It's, it's never your church anyway. The vision got to be to disciple a city and a nation. Yeah. And in order to do that, we need everyone. We need everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's right. It's a shortage of vision, but it's actually just a shortage of sheer obedience. The scripture is very clear. Uh, about unity, yeah. very clear. It's, there's, yeah. no, there's no, there's no um, argument, or shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. just reading oh, yeah. scriptures. Yeah. So if we if we believe the Bible, we should obey it and do it. Yeah, and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, always un joy. unity is far more enjoyable than division. Always. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, takeaway for today. Uh, takeaway today, uh, the church should be like a good marriage, uh, humble and living for each other. And um, then that uh, living for one another will reflect an overflow to a wider community that desperately wants intimacy and care and love and relationship. Wow, that's a good summary and that's a good encouragement. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.